All right, we're on to the second part of the video. We have uh, some design work done, and we're going to go ahead and create the tool path to make this thing happen. So, uh, very first thing is obviously you have to have CAM installed. So, if that's not popping up on your computer, at least in our lab, there's a code that you can ask for, and I can give it to you that has that all ready to go. So, when you click up the CAM tab, you get all these tools. Uh, I have a few more than you guys, but you get the drift. First place you want to start is in the setup takes you over to the cam browser over here and right now this is where the zero is sitting at um, which is not where I want it I'm gonna go ahead and put mine in what let me say let's go to the top left corner Z is going the wrong direction if you see that we always want Z going up right for a three uh, three axis mill so if we kinda come over here we can select the Z axis and let's say the X plane you could use really any of these but uh, you just need to pick an edge of your part that travels the same direction as the Z. So for me, I'm just going to go ahead and click here. And when I do that, you're going to see this Y change to Z. Got that. X is going the correct direction and Y is going the correct direction. So we're all we're good on that. Click to the next little thing that says stock. Defaults to adding a little extra material to your part. Um, we're going to go ahead and just say no additional stock. We're going to mill it and everything so it's the right size before we start. And from there, you just hit OK. We got everything ready to rock. So that's good. That's good. Next up, if we are just going to go around this thing as a engraving tool path, the easiest one to use is what we call a 2D contour. There's some other ones, but for this video, I'm going to focus in on engraving it with a 2D contour. So once I do that, the very you have a series of tabs. The very first one is tool. So I'm going to go ahead and click. Uh, I want flood coolant because I'm going to be doing aluminum on here. I'm going to click tool right now. And you might have a list of tools. I personally, it's just as easy to click new mill tool. Um, the tool that we're going to use is tool 19. It's an engraving mill. I do want a flood coolant. Uh, this particular tool is carbide. The cutter, next tab over. We'll say that it's actually a chamfer. Uh, let's see what do we got here. It, it, this part isn't like absolutely critical to anything. It's more, you know... I don't know what I want to say, but <laughs> we're good. We're good with that. So we'll just let's just call it a flat mill for that, for lack of better terms. Diameter on it. Let's make it real small because it actually goes to a tip. So this is a very very small cutter. From there, um, really the main thing is you could input all those things, but we don't need them for cam. The stuff that we do, we really don't need any of that stuff until we get over here to feeds and speeds because we do want it to calculate correctly. Uh, that is a two flute cutter. If we go ahead and say that the cutting feed rate is 40, that's that's pretty tall order for what we're usually doing with this little Tormach mill. So let's just go with uh, 15 in there. We can also do um, plunge feed rate, which is kind of cool. So 5 is real slow for the plunge, which that's nice. I like that there. So 15, 5, 2 flutes, 5,000 RPMs. I like it. If that's good, click OK makes my tool and go ahead and just hit select alright so now I got a tool next up one next tab over is select the contours fair enough I'm gonna go ahead and just this is where if you you know had a bunch of them you just click one and if it's connected an inventor it just selects the whole thing and that's all I need for that next tab over this one is very important this is what I call the crash tab because if you select the wrong planes on this, your tool could go deeper than what you want it to be. I'm going to click on the front view so you can take a look at it. Right now, everything's set. This is your uh, clearance plane, your retract height, your feed height. That stuff's good. The top of your part is good. The bottom height. I always use selection. That's my, that's my, um, my normal one if I was going to be milling down to the bottom of a pocket. In which case, I don't have an actual, you know, um, I don't have a bottom depth on here if you look at that. Like it's just a 2D sketch right now. So I really don't have that. So if I go absolute, what that does is from the top of the stock, it says, hey, absolute, how deep do you want to go? I'm going to go negative 0 0.050, 50 thou. And you see how that drops it down just 50 thousandths into the part? Boom, we're good to go. All right, 
And then if you have that, you can go ahead and click the next tab over. And this is where it asks you if you want to do multiple paths and depths and things like that. But for our purposes, we're just going to do one quick path, 50 thou deep, call it good. There's some other settings that we can do later on as we get more advanced. But for our first part, that will, that will basically be good to go. All right. So just one more time, double checking that my bottom was 50 thou deep. I'm good. I'm going to hit OK. All right. So now it shows me a setup. It shows me a 2D contour. Next step is just to take a look at this thing real fast. So I'm going to go to simulate. Shows my little tool. Look how, look how small that little thing is. Yeah, that's awesome. Next is turn this off so that's out of the way so we can see it. This will show my tool paths. You can click this to actually show the stock and what it really cuts. Because right now you can see it's just kind of some lines right now. And from here you can click play. And that goes down through there. Cut, cut, cut around and done if you had multiple depths it would show that as well so if that all looks good kind of fun thing here you can click on some different tabs in here and it can tell you take one minute to run this part according to this so hit close last piece of the the puzzle is actually creating the code so from here it's post process for the tormach we're going to use the Haas post configuration. So click on this and make sure it says Haas, generic Haas. That's very important. Um, this is where it saves to. I don't know if you want to change that if you want to. You can. Um, program number. Comment tells me what it is. I'm going to call this the Hawk. Uh, where do we make this thing? I can't even remember. Four by six aluminum. And then post. And this is going to go ahead and post into this file folder right here. If I want to change it to somewhere else, I could. Like, I'm just going to put it on my desktop, but you could put it into your student number at this point. Call it Hawk. Test, something along those lines. Save. And check this out. You'll really appreciate that. All your G code created. Here's tool 19. That's how big it is. Here's your contour. Turns your stuff on. Rock and roll. There's all the program to be able to do that. Ends with the, your ending lines. I like to hit the black pot tool right here, back pot, black pot window. And the cool thing is you start up here at the top and just use your arrow key down. You can watch this thing, watch all its moves, each line of code. So that way, before you ever run this thing in the Tormach, you will know what it should do and where it'll go like that Z move up over and end so as long as everything looks good on that you're good to go this is the file that you've already saved if uh, for some reason um, it's not where you want it or you want to put it on a jump drive you just click Save As and you know this thing start, has the right file format so you just select your jump drive save it on there and bring it out to the machine Set your machine up and rock and roll. So uh, this is a quick and easy way to do a uh, engraving toolpath using the Tormach and Autodesk Inventor. Um, next thing will get a little bit more complex. Thanks a lot.